Laysia Clarendon, nice move to the basket. So Laysia, you have made it through a full length season. Mm -hmm. Now that you've had some time to reflect back on the season, what are some of your thoughts yeah. that you learned and from being here? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, <laughs> obviously it was a tough last year for me with uh, being at New York and getting into Minnesota later and kind of all the contract situations that happened. But I think I learned like from the outside in, you see the links. Obviously, I played against them. I played what nine going on 10 years. So I've seen the culture, but now to be inside of it, I think it's really fascinating to actually learn firsthand. And like when you get behind the curtain, sometimes you're disappointed, right? Because you see things from the outside in. But I've gotten behind the curtain and seen it all. And I'm like, it's pretty much all that I saw from the outside in terms of, you know, the investment in the culture and in the people, and like that's, and obviously you need talent to win. Clarendon, the three! The three points! Laysia Clarendon! We love you with the Minnesota Lynx! How what a that? debut! Did you learn anything about yourself as far as being able to be thrown into situations? Because I always remember that first game you were in, <laughs> and I think you had had maybe one yeah. walkthrough with the team, and that was it. Yeah. You had a great game. I've known this about myself and I think it's that I'm really resilient and I think it's just that I continue to be resilient. Um, it's actually a similar situation happened when I got traded from Atlanta to Connecticut. I had one shoot around and I played in the next game. So I'm like, why does this keep happening to me? So I've learned that like I just continue to be resilient. I continue to adapt and grow and learn and get better every year. And I think that's why I've stood around in this league and why I've sustained a career even when things have gone up and down and rosters have changed. Where did that come from as you were growing up? Was there a place where that resiliency was born? Oh, that's a good question. Our family's kind of tough and rough and sports was always around. So I was always like a little feisty person. My dad's nickname for me uh, was Buster Douglas because he loved fighting. So he's called me Buster all my life. So like I've had that little just chip on my shoulder that like I was always really skinny and I was always fight with the boys and it was like they're not gonna pass you the ball so like you gotta go take it and when you get it my dad would tell me like don't give it back just go score. <laughs> you have been a leader in being that spokesperson around social justice in particular around being the first trans non-binary athlete. Does that ever feel like a weight? Yes. It's as important as we know the work is. Yeah, it does. It's been a, a really interesting journey. Like I'm coming up on a year in January, so even that gives me pause sometimes because it's still been so new. It's been a really fast adjustment in terms of like getting my body back ready to play sports um, and obviously sharing about it publicly. It's been a really mix of like the joy and excitement of sharing that and getting support and also like kind of the overwhelm of how much support and um, the weight of like being the first of anything. It's lonely. There was no one who had played basketball and had had surgery and could like tell me what recovery was going to be like, what I needed to do to get back on the court, like, you know, how painful it was going to be. Did you feel like maybe part of what kept you going through that is kind of knowing how you were serving others that were watching? Definitely. That's something that I always need to know that like it's always young people, but it's actually I get people who are a lot older than me, too, because generationally folks who like couldn't be themselves, people who are 50 and over are like I had top surgery, you know, 10 years ago and like no one was talking about it. What do you think basketball has brought to you? I mean, obviously a lot, but yeah. like when you look back, is there something that really stands out that the game of basketball has brought to you? Yeah. It's definitely brought like the safe haven for me coming out of college. Like you never know what job you're gonna get. And like, you know, it's nine years later, I'm going to my 10th season. I could have had multiple jobs by now. Like people switch careers more often than not. And so a place where I could land and specifically the WNBA, like have a community. Like that to me, when I think about, as I get later in my career, I think like, how many more years am I gonna play? And when am I gonna be done? The thing that breaks my heart the most is losing this basketball community. And I wouldn't lose it, right? I'd still be like a part of it, but yes. like I would not see these people every day that even when we travel and play other teams, like this community of basketball in the WNBA has been like a place where I could just grow and I could be free. And I'm in a league where like, I've seen everything from braids and different hairstyles and like culturally and like that has been like the most beautiful thing that I've been gifted. And like, it happens to be through this vehicle of basketball. Malaysia Clarendon, nice move to the basket. 
When I close my eyes and I just feel the rhythm and the movement of playing and running and the freedom that playing gives me. It's like even the wind of like sprinting down the court and making a pass and making a move like that is basketball has just given me so much freedom and opportunity that like it's the, the greatest gift I think I've ever been given. Laisha Clarendon comes in with a huge performance.